then I know that like they they act like they know me and that's because they do they watch me every day and they want to get to know the players that don't stream that don't like present themselves on the regular basis and that's what I love about this tournament is you like I honestly had no idea what Lil was like as, as a human being and then you just get him on the couch and you can tell he's just like a you know, smug, but in, a, in like an intelligent way, like funny guy that just yeah. like what he said about Cole is like, he's like, you know, some days you're on point and you're just going to win a tournament and other days you lose the complexity. Uh, I was yeah. talking to the VP, I think the manager on the couch earlier. I was just talking to him about like no one as well, like because they, they got to the finals of like a minor without their cap. Ten seconds Same. Yeah, about. without losing a game, yes, without it's actually insane. anyone coming close to them. Five and it's like it shows how much like cause yesterday no one was on the couch with Lil. And I was really surprised with like the stuff no one was saying because he said a lot of like smart things And I can tell like that team like I know Solo he's a great captain But you can tell like I feel Ramsey's and uh, no one they're both very vocal like players You can tell like a lot of their team success is off like the, the tough thing to talk yeah. about in game and You don't really have that many those kind of core players in Dota I feel like there's a few like Johan, like, sorry No Tail is one of them, Envy is like one But I feel like both Ramsey's and no one they're very like they're different than other players in the sense like they talk a lot and they have like strong ideas and I feel that's like a reason they got to the finals without their cap. They're still by far the so, best team at this tournament, at least right now, uh, without their what, what many would see as the most important player in your team. Yeah. It's just like you need that central voice from the captain, but I think what's becoming more and more common and you're saying it with VP, I think they do it best is like if every single player knows exactly when they're strong, what they want to do, like how to play the game, there's a lot that doesn't need to be said so you don't necessarily yeah, need the captain though, to find those kind of yeah and I'm, I'm saying like that's like I, I think they're going to become more and more of them as time goes on but like right now it's very few teams very few teams that actually have it yeah. it's like the chinese teams have a few like i think uh, super is one of those players that's like that yeah he's like yeah. very similar to like i feel like no one maybe not play style but the, the pox that bada i think there's sccc i heard he like so, BSJ, your Leviathans, they're playing Gotus Pro tomorrow, Ugh. best of five. You get to choose one player that VP doesn't have on their team. Who would it be? It doesn't sound like it's no solo one for sure. I think, like, I they're think all no super really good, good, but no one's, like... Like, I don't know if you ever, like, watch a stream, but whenever I watch it, like... There's very few players who I'll watch their stream and just be like, holy crap. Like, they're actually just so good. Um, like, obviously, they, there's plenty of players I'm impressed by, but he... Like, when he's on stream, like, every... Every single lane, every single game, he just like approaches all stages so correctly, and I just think he's fundamentally, honestly, the best player, maybe in the world. Yeah. Uh, Simel at uh, TI5, it's like a funny story. Like Simel respected two mid players at TI5, it was no one and maybe. And um, if you if you remember CDC from TI5, before they were in the wild cards, the only team they had trouble beating besides EG at that tournament was uh, uh, the team that no one was on, which was Vega. They almost lost to them in the wild cards. And if you watch the games, no one like completely shit on them in two games. It was pretty funny. You remember uh, OG when they played at um, was it like uh, it was Frankfurt Major, and in the groups they ended up losing to remaining. Vega, and it was yeah. because like no one, he was like the only person that was having a good amount of success against Miracle. Yeah. But we're into OG versus Fnatic. Yeah, OG. we got our draft. We'll, we'll yeah. switch attention now, focused in on Not the other semifinal. No Wyvern. That's the first comment I noticed is Wyvern yet. I'm confused. Actually, why is there first two Naga? They like it though. First they, two though? Yeah, they were, they were doing, they do it all the time with like what's the mid hero Shadowfeed? I seen yeah. Naga Naga Marana used to be a thing, but then Marana kind of was bad. Also, Night Stalker, we haven't seen him that much in this tournament. Yeah, so I feel four. like the only team that prioritized him was VP. Yeah. Which is weird because I think they said that. They felt like this hero is a bit limited. It's like a strong hero, but it, it has to be a killer. Like, the only way you make this hero work is it has to go around getting kills. I think you told me, Sam, once, like, you played in a game, you had, like, a 20-minute Ags, and then you watch people go high ground on you, and you don't provide enough team fight. Yeah, that's the problem with the hero. His, his laning phase is also, like, uh, it's not as good as the other, like, heroes. Pill four minutes, so. Is it possible that this Nog is a core, or are you pretty sure it's a four? I think... I, I feel like the reasoning they picked this is because, uh, is what I said in the start, like, Ten seconds, Fnatic has had kind of been only winning when they win the lanes. And the Naga Five support, he's like one of the strongest laners in the game, if you, even if, if you remember AG at TF5. 
AOI would just go off lane with the Naga on the four and like Zoe, uh, you know, oh, high armor. Like high armor. Riptide, I think, got buffed. Like the Illusion Naga got nerfed, right? But Riptide got really buffed. So in some ways, support Naga has been buffed in the past few patches. I think Misery is like the only player that I've seen play uh, support. Um, he was playing when he was, when he was on Optic, he would pick Naga support. So I don't understand this Underlord pick at all, to be honest. Like, you're not flaming it, I just... Do you, have a, do you guys have any it's idea? A, just Hero Fanatic, like, the highest... Like, remaining. been playing it for months now, like, as one of their top offlane heroes, so... Yeah. Seems like a comfort pick. It's pretty good at taking Roche. Talk about being on the dire side, wanting to secure that Roche. He's a... He's an imbalanced laner. Uh, if you 1v1 him, versus, like, every offlaner, he actually beats every lane. Yeah, the pass is insane. So the reason that Fnatic likes this hero is because I said, like, they like the winning the lanes, and... If they pick Underlord, they can send them safe lane versus the off laner, go aggro. They can send them off laner with like a pile I die hero. And he's just like really chaotic in the lanes. If you watch every Underlord game, the last like few days, you remember like the Underlord has always these high last hits, right? Yeah. And, but the problem with this hero is he doesn't do much compared to other heroes that has a, gets a lot of farm. Like you, you give a lot of farm to a hero like Beastmaster or uh, for even Omni Knight, but like Underlord, he doesn't really have that much kill potential, right? He just kind of pushes lanes and gets fat. But he's like a super strong laner, which is why Fnatic love picking him. They picked him like pretty much every game, I think. I, I guess that's the only reason. I, I in terms of putting it into the draft, just a comfort yeah. zone thing. They know what they're doing yeah. with it. And also, what God said is true. Like uh, he gives you, he secures you Roche because his Q spell is like oh, insane, super yeah. good on Roche. So. They both need a five, something we don't see too often. Neither of them have picked a five yet. You watch the series uh, OG versus um, who's the team they played last night? Cult complexity. Yeah. Like, I thought that that series was like a battle of who got Wyvern. And like finally, o uh, OG first picked the Wyvern. So it's interesting to see, like, suddenly they're not picking... Because I think their two favorite fives were Wyvern and Shadow Demon, right? Yes. I feel like OG's game plan centers a lot on Fly's five hero. I think the Shaman, too. They maybe yeah. even more, played the Shaman more than those two. Do we... I, are we I, I'm like 100... I'm pretty sure, and I don't know, you guys think that this next pick's going to be one of those three heroes. Yes, it should be. That's why I feel like Envy should have banned Wyvern and uh, Shadow Demon instead of uh, Undying plus whatever. Because I feel like yesterday OG got exposed. If you watch their drafts, like if when they didn't have the Wyvern, the SD, or the Rasta, I feel like they've lost a lot of the games. Like they picked like Phoenix 5 or something. Like what else is he going to play? Like I think there's maybe AA, but oh, A is banned. They banned AA. So I feel like Envy should have banned the Wyvern or the Shadow Demon. And now he gets a free one of those two. Unless he has something else completely different, but... That's how I take OG, at least, this tournament. I like Wyvern already against, like, the high-strength heroes, but... SD is really good right now with Tiny. That, that combo SD's is insanely strong. Yes. Ten seconds remaining. You also kill Underlord really easily. Yeah, yeah. he's good against Tanky Core. Five seconds remaining. Open that present. I think about it. The Underlord's really good against Tiny, just because of like the pa passive reducing the base damage Tiny has, as yeah. even as the game goes on, grow being good. I guess for OG, the Tiny's really like their main carry, though. That's only oh. like No Tails hero. He goes to like a drums into blink, creates space while Rezo's playing like, the hot bomb. Yeah. Shadow Fiend, and Medusa. Medusa's still in the pool, by the way. Yeah, I, I'm not sure. Like, uh, I feel like Envy didn't do the other research because like if you ban one of the two, like OG takes it, and you can't take it. So now his concept is maybe maybe he wanted to trade entirely. Yeah. Maybe that's why he didn't ban it. But I feel like they've lost every game when they have haven't had one of those fives. I feel you just Ten ban both, and then remaining. you've you've they've won with like Rubix and stuff, right? Like Fnatic has a bigger five hero pool on the five. I agree. Field. So they kind of gave them this SD tiny combo, which I think is insanely strong, like throughout the game, because you take the counter to tiny, right? Yeah, it's I, th I think SD is very good versus tiny, and you. Give him a hero, like, you give the save, and the, the disruptions on the tiny, like, when you're allied, it's really strong. You have super high burst in lane. And, yeah, so, I'm, I'm liking the, I'm liking OG's game plan. Like, whatever Fly and Sebastian gets effing mad, yep. talked about, like, this Naga support, which I think it is, it, they picked it purely to secure No-Tail's lane. You may not see uh, Sebastian or... Fucking mad in the the room, but he is uh, drafting. He is still coaching remote. Yeah, remote. So, yeah. Uh, he's got shared screen or Skype audio. Yeah, they use. And if you read uh, his Twitter, like he he something cool he's doing is like he's able to listen to all the casts too from home. 
Yeah. And I feel like uh, if you if you watch a lot of these casts that like some players have been like talking, and like some like there's a lot of stuff you can learn. Like uh, I feel like yesterday he was tweeting like uh, I really love listening to Lil Cast. And if you <laughs> he watch, he wanted more of Lil's cast. Yeah, yeah. If you if you listen yeah. to Lil and uh, no one talk, yeah. like you can learn a lot about how Virtus Pro think. Because they were talking a lot about denying and uh, the lanes and stuff that like meant that. a lot. Yeah, I was and, insane to hear. And that. it's like suddenly Jerax is gonna probably play this Naga hero, and it, it kind of suits everything. So I'm thinking like you know they had a long talk and like fucking man's like yo oh, Lil Lil talked about all this, or maybe he just like he is like I have this strong opinion, and now you can see it in their draft. So I don't Weaver particularly pick, yeah. love the Weaver pick myself. It's like one of the better laners against Brew. Uh, because you can like still last hit if you're drunken haze with Sakuchi and you, like you have enough mana because of the Ten stick, but remaining. uh, they lack lockdown on the side Five of Fnatic remaining. and they lack carry as well. And they definitely need some semblance of a carry and they don't have absolute last pick. So I feel like whatever hero they pick is just going to get lane countered. I don't love the pick. Um, they do have a high paced lineup though. I don't yeah. know what you think. Do you think they lack catch there outside of Fnatic? Uh, I think on Fnatic. Like, isn't it awkward for them to start? Yeah, but they've kind of had the, this in all their drafts, right? Like, their support. Yes. When you pick Underlord yes. often, that's kind of the problem you have, right? And then yeah. they've been playing, like, Rubik ET every game and Rubik's there. But, like, Rubik is better than Wyvern in starting fights, right? So, uh, I see what Blitz is saying. I also agree with what BSJ said about, like, the Weaver. But I can see the reasoning, because Weaver is one of the best heroes in lane versus Panda. Uh, his panda and generally how S4 minutes. plays is he just drunken hazes the uh, carry. But Weaver can farm with the Sakuchi through it, and he also benefits from the wand versus panda. So, like I said, Envy, he literally, the way he's been drafting this tournament is literally just caring about the lanes. So you can see it in his draft. Like they have this Underlord Night Stalker duo off lane, which is really strong. Then you have the Wyvern that can help the Weaver or the mid hero, and then you have like the Weaver that doesn't really die to Panda in lane. So, they're, if Fnatic don't win these lanes uh, right now with the with the lineup that OG has, I feel OG has his advantage. But it's like the whole concept, if Fnatic can win these lanes, which they've been doing every game they've won, uh, they have a fairly good shot. Is Medusa not their pick? Like, uh, just like a hard, that don't they need a hard carry in the mid lane? Yes, they should definitely pick Medusa, but I don't know if Abed generally plays that hero. Yeah, it doesn't stick in like his style, but I, I, he is like usually the solo carry of the game hero. Usually more flashy heroes like the, the Tinkers, but, which has already been banned now second round. I just feel like they need. It. They need a late gamer. And he wants Tinker. They ban Terrorblade. Well, Tinker's banned. Oh, okay. They ban Terrorblade, which means Medusa's maybe. Yeah, it is a decent counter. Goes both ways, though. Yeah. Uh, Why do you think Medusa's been ignored this far? Like, we've seen a lot of the Medusa's picked up very early in the draft. And it's kind of Ten bad as being remaining. top meta heroes right now. Uh, the more they get picked, like, the more teams figure it out, so that they're, you know, went to first pick, pick second pick, because people were like, wow, how do we beat this hero? And then suddenly these are strats that beat the hero and worked, like, came to fruition, so then they're like, eh, we'll wait. And it's still, like, a good hero, like, very good, and it has to be considered in your draft, but it's not as, like, it kind of goes from late picks to first picks, because people don't know how to counter it, then people learn how to counter it. But I feel like uh, as a hero gets, like, Pick more and more death profit. Oh, I actually thought that DP was gonna be picked by OG because it's it like doesn't really care about the Night Stalker. It's a Yule's builder too, which I think is really good against uh, OG's lineup. And OG needs like wave clear too. Like I feel like they need out spam. They're gonna pick so my sniper. sniper is my uh, invoke. Oh, okay, uh, yeah, hero that sits in the back was my idea, but. It's not exactly what I thought. They do have a lot of setup. Naga Net, Shadow Demon Disruption, or the Sun Strikes. Rezzer's been trying to make this hero work. I've seen him so many times just in the watch tab playing Invoker. They played it once and one with an MDL, but it's, I mean, it's a tough hero to play right now. Yeah, it's because he like, you know, OG Classic, right? Every mid hit player before him on that team has like been the best Invoker in the world, <laughs> right? So he just wants to fall. Yeah. 
I I like how OG has kind of adapted their drafts throughout this tournament, and I feel like the way they pick around Tiny now is like really good. We talked about previous series how like they don't play it as a one position on no one, even though whatever lane he goes to, sometimes mid, sometimes safe lane. It's like a hero that's just guaranteed to get a good lane and then does its job, but doesn't really carry the game. So I really like how they have these like four heroes that run around the map doing stuff, and then Boker. Uh, the, the lane is really important because uh, how it should be is that I think they're going to let S4 solo and they're going to sit there with SD, Tiny, Naga and literally their game plan is to like stroke like no tail, you know, stroke his Tiny. Sorry. Stroke that big stick of his. Stroke that big stick of his Tiny. But, yes. And like they have Sunstrike with the, uh, with the disruption and yeah, so. I think they need help mid at least a little bit. I think it'll be Naga though in the mid lane to start. Yeah. Just to like uh, kind of serve as a damage soak because of the high armor and like otherwise Night Stalker can kind of just bully the Voker away. Um, like past the early few levels, I think Invoker will do well. They just have to be wary of him like feeding at nighttime because they do have the Wyvern, Night Stalker roam, and DP's pretty pretty strong with like level four or five. So to they've they've got that. good sets for the Sun Strike, you know, Ensnare, Shadow Demon Disruption, Kill Potential, they, that, that make it a good Invoker game. Outside of that, like what, what makes this like a good game to be picking Invoker, other than the fact you do have Sunstrike kill up. He's just a hero that like doesn't want to play with the team early on in the game, and they have a bunch of heroes that create space. They have S they have uh, Brewmaster on S4 and, and No Tail on Tiny, like two heroes that team fight and pressure towers. So then you just have this hero that needs to make use of that space. The other day they picked Arc Warden, um, and today you know that's just their playstyle and Resolution, being one of like the top farming players honestly in the world. Uh, makes use of that space better than anybody. So he's just a hero that's scaled. Like, they have no lockdown on Fnatic. Literally no lockdown. And the counter to Invoker is, like, going, getting on him and bursting him. So I, I actually think OG's draft... I, I heavily favor OG's draft here. I think uh, Fnatic is on a timer. Like, I look at the cores on Fnatic, and all three of them easily died to Tidy. Something I learned uh, from BSJ, actually. He's hey. talking about the how to counter Tiny, and... Tiny is weak for like the cores he can't burst. That's why Medusa is kind of good versus Tiny, right? So I look at the cores on Fnatic's side, and I feel he can kind of burst, uh, especially the Weaver and the DP. Wow. So learning something new every day, Sam. Thank you, BSJ. <laughs> Thank you. But well, you've got the promo code. I know some stuff, but I, I've actually learned so much at this tournament. Just being around these players has been awesome. And you guys uh, should just start charging people. To the pain to, to be here. <laughs> uh, yeah. That's a new way, yeah. Yes. So, when it comes cast at summer, uh, that'll cost you uh, 20 bucks a day. Annoying, but also, like, the reason they like they want this invoker, he's a, he's a win condition, right? So, they want, like, generally, OG, they always want resolution on the win condition hero. They don't want to give no till the, they want no till to be, like, the playmaking player, and they want no t uh, resolution to be terribly. I guess he's like stopped, lost faith in Medusa or something. They lost like a game or two with him. But yeah, they didn't have good success. Yeah, Invoker is like a win condition hero. My my problem with this hero is like, he has a lot of the same weaknesses like Anti Mage has in some way. Like, uh, he's a hero that needs like this fast like, uh, he's like Arcor in some sense too. Like, you need this like high level, and like you need your like two or three items before you can really fight. And yeah. before that, you're kind of like, you're not really that useful at fighting. Yeah, like you don't have no purpose game besides farming. That's why even like the best invoker players like they don't really play the hero anymore. Like you stop picking him, I think. New even newbie like stop. I don't liquid as well. I don't think they really picked him that much at Dream League. So seems like one game every now and then when liquid's really in a roll, they might bust it out, but it's all they will pick him. Because the meta's gone so fast, and invoker's like a 20-minute hero. Like you're playing a game essentially without your mid hero for. 15, 20 minutes. Like, SCCC said this hero has, like, one of the weirdest, like, curves ever. Because for 15 minutes, he's essentially useless. Like, Sunstrike's nice, but a lot of other heroes could make kills happen around the map, like Bob. But this hero becomes so strong in the late game. But in the early game, does very, very little. All he does is hit neutral creeps. Are you, uh, on OG side to this draft world? We haven't the predictions fully in. I think Fnatic can win this game, because I could see a very real scenario where they just keep ganking mid repeatedly. If they take the mid tower and the bottom tower before like 12 minute mark, I'd say I favor their chances. Because then they can just limit the amount of space that Invoker has. You ward the camp with the uh, shrine on it, on the left side, and then Invoker can't really farm. Like, he's got a touch lane. 
I don't like the way that um, Fnatic is looking. I feel like Fnatic needs to give Abed a good lane, and they're not really helping the mid. But and he has like one last hit, and Invoker has four to three. It's on his, it's on the Invoker's hill too, and now Naga's just gonna heal and run at the, the, the again. I feel like the DP. And if I look at Fnatic's trap, there's one hero that needs a good start. It's Death Prophet. Like this unroller with a good start. What is he gonna do with it? So it's a problem with the hero. But like. If this Death Prophet gets shut down, which is happening to him right now, like, uh, they don't really have a hero that can make space on the map. So. Go this Brewmaster, he's just gonna keep throwing Drunken Haze at Weaver. Let me get his farm. But it's not really being contested at all. You can see, like, you know, OG are understanding this, like, as well, picking this Naga support. Like, look at the denies on the Eagle. Okay, I look so much at the denies now when I look at this last hit screen. I never really looked at it before. But well, they didn't matter nearly as much as they do now at this point. Kind of shows who's got the edge in the lane. Like often in the mid matchup, you'll have two heroes who can get last hits. Like a DK is going to spam his fire, but if one hero is getting all the denies, clearly they're having the upper hand there with the extra support. Massive level advantage from denies. And like in the previous patches, if you had a hero with you and you got every single He's deny, you still got out leveled. But that's not the case anymore. Denies just give you nothing. Yeah, not scout the invasion. Dire scan. Does he? He knows. They can go on him, right? He yeah, walks up, but he seems to be aware yeah. of what's going on here. Yeah. But this is like, it's still not good. It doesn't feel good. Like, this hero, this hero needs to get a decent lane. Like, Death Prophet is not a good comeback hero. But the, the good Death Prophet is like that fast phase, you know, Yules, blah, 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 that runs at your towers and runs and kills you. But this is like the DP that's losing his lane. Yeah, I love feels these like support shit. movements by OG. <laughs> they want to set up a some strike with bottom. Said, you said they were just going to leave the Brewmaster to his own devices and then they're just securing the star for the other two cores. Yeah, like you said, they need to prioritize DP on Fnatic, which they're not. And then I think OG has the right priorities on their laning stage. So, PSA, being a tiny player, yes. I watched you play Tiny the other day. I see every game, like this hero, when he goes safe lane, it always like, doesn't, it doesn't feel like his last hits ever get contested. Like, what, why is that? It, it's... If you're a melee hero, he always threatens tosses under tower. And then, like, also if you're a melee hero, anytime, like, you can go you go for a last hit, he can actually just miss the deny, but hit you at, at the same time. So he's either getting the deny, but also harassing you. And it's like 100 damage. You can't, like, match up against it. So he just trades really efficiently. So if you contest him, you're, like, losing the trades guaranteed. I think that's a broken concept, the hero. I think it's broken. That it, I think, like, they used to be increasing up oh, they haven't... Looks like everyone's gonna be okay here, but it's like the concept that they gave him a bunch of base damage over like the patches before they changed him, and now they just give him cleave. So now he has like really high base damage and cleave. And I think like what if they actually nerf him, which I believe they will, it'll be his base damage. Uh, I think is the problem. If he only, if he had like honestly 10 less base damage, I think he'd still be a fine hero, just like not completely broken. Look at the last hits on the single look right now. The dream. Abed, so sad right now. Because A, he's, I don't think he's enjoys playing this hero that much. And B, kind of getting dumpstered in late. Okay. That's insane. CS difference. Did you play with him on DC? Was he one of those mids that wanted to have lots of support to come and help him? Or did he like being kind of left alone most of the time? What, what was he, his style? He doesn't really say anything. So you have to play off him. Okay. But generally, he's a player uh, that's kind of... Uh, I didn't really understand it, but like he's a killing player. Like he has like this, the Pinoy, like you know he's like he reminds me a lot of like you know Cuckoo from DNC. Yeah, yeah. They don't they're not the exact same player, but they have like he they, he loves playing these Quops and Pucks and Tinkers and like all these intelligence heroes, and he loves killing you. He's really good at gauging exactly when he can. Yeah, it's, it's, it reminds me a lot of Sumo, honestly. He's not like a, a huge farming player, but he he, he will kill you. There's the sun strike set up, yeah. So Rezo getting the kill, but next best thing, your Tiny gets the kill. And he goes for this bottle pretty much every yeah. game on Tiny. It's so nice being able to buy it from the, the secret shop. Like he wants his core items and farm, and then he wants, like how he plays his Meepa, right? He wants his Blink, and he wants his Dragonlance, and then he's gonna run, chase you across the map and kill everyone. And that's kind of his strength as a player. And now he's playing this Death Prophet. DP, he doesn't really have high solo kill potential. Here we go again. Gosh, Deja Vu Ohio again getting going on, and this time no tell. Well, can't finish off the kill. Bruh. They invested a lot into that lane too. Attic. They dual lane that for quite some time, only for him to die twice. Yeah. Like now it's not worth the trade of them giving up on their DP. 
Tiny's getting runes and stuff too, so he's got endless mana supply. Double damage rune bottom, that's so huge for this hero. He, with his ult, he's gonna hit for 130 with double damage. Looking really good for OG right now. You can you can feel it like in the game, like uh, watch just even watching it, like the levels, uh, the now it's like the supports as well, like who's making plays on supports. Like this Night Stalker, it's nighttime. What has he done? Still sitting top. It, it feels like in a sense OG have almost won three lanes. Like yeah, they're not winning the CS up top, but the fact Brewmaster is getting uncontested yeah. last hits and levels is I, in a sense a win. I also don't like that Envy's like I don't know if Envy asked Pi to stay here, but I don't like that NS is staying top so long. Like. I feel like the reason you pick the Weaver versus the Brew is that the Weaver will last it regardless. Yeah, you don't of need to help him. And I feel like this NS is like should have been mid or should have been bottom and the Wyvern should have been mid. And I feel like that's kind of screwing over Fnatic's game because I feel like this Invoker versus Wyvern Q, like uh, he will actually lose his lane versus DP. Wyvern Q is probably the best level one spell in the game, right? I think there's no other spell as good as I feel. Most damage by far, yeah. And like the Wyvern used the spell not helping the hero he should have been helping. It should have been the NS bottom or top. The Wyvern starting mid, helping Abed, and then eventually at some point the Night Stalker can rotate mid and they can die of the Invoker. But like, suddenly this Invoker is super fat, DP is level 5 when Invoker is level 7, and the game just feels like shit. And any hero on the game actually in the mid lane cannot land against that no. setup with level 7 Invoker. Like, Invoker with levels is insanely scary, his yeah. damage output. Now Fnatic, they have no real play option. Yep. This is going to be one of those Night Stalker with zero kills games. And it, it, it's horrible. I'd even die here. Yeah. We he talked about no how this hero's a killer. Like, that's his main purpose. It's snowball. Help your team out. Oh. Huh. I, they, they even knew that move was coming mid with the Night Stalker. Like, Jarrett is just sitting there on that hill by the mid tower, just waiting for the Night Stalker to roam in for that, that play and counters it. They have some strength for this kill. But they do have the kill onto the, uh, the Night Stalker and they're gonna get a high as well with one more toss. No Tail gets himself a double kill. He's on a dominating streak. They're gonna get more? Yep. DJ. Could be no more here, No Tail. Kinda of low. Uh, DD is so much value, he's gonna like two shot on Tiny is out of control. So far. Hey boys, my 2 0 3 0s still alive. Hey man. We'll chop it up to my outdraft. Two o three o. Something to be I want to talk a bit more about like why it is an outdraft. They're just saying no. No, die. yeah, no. And I said it during the draft was I've said that like they had absolute last pick on OG, and then Fnatic set up this draft where Abed's hero was gonna have to like carry the game. And then since OG has absolute last pick, Abed's gonna get a lack of ideals set up in the in the laning stage, and that just makes it really hard to win when your win condition has a bad lane. I don't even need the sun strike, uh, just a straight up solo kill looks good. Yeah, but give your boy the last hit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he, he's not, not giving it to him. If he wants to throw that sun strike. Uh, <laughs> Roman needs to earn that respect to get that. You know, no. Ana earned the respect and Miracle earned it. Now Roman needs like, oh wow, <laughs> last boulder as he's coming out of the roll. I mean, at this point, it's well and truly three lanes one. We'll see what MB can do to, to rotate and make some plays. But. I don't know their comeback potential. I think they'll eventually have to like force a rush with DPO. Because they can't really push towers in the roof. Mid lane. Found the kill for the inv invoker possibly here with the Arbed. It's just going fast for us. Yeah. That NS just respawned. Oh, yeah. well, Weaver cleanup. He has time lapse. Yeah. Maybe he's trying. Yeah, he's going to get a couple of kills here. Okay. Don't oh, rest is at a mana. No mana for, yeah, go squad. But uh, I don't know, Fnatic's draft, uh, their win condition is snowballing lanes and then playing really fast paced with Weaver, Death Prophet, of course. And Radiant literally just needed to survive lanes. And instead, what happened is Radiant crushed the lanes. And that just looks horrible for Fnatic. Yeah, if these lanes were opposite, it seemed like as expected. Instead, it's like oh, Naga almost. It's was there. <laughs> it's was hoping he ran that direction. In the other days, uh, OG was drafting these like Shadow Demon court or Shadow Demon supports. He's like low damage supports, and I and my comment was like they had no damage, and they were picking these like Medusas, and I really like the way they like adjusted their drafts. Now they have Tiny Brewmaster and Voker, and like you just have these setups with the two supports, which is the way they want to play, and then you have a lot of damage follow up, and it's actually leading to a lot of early game kills. The first move coming out from Abed with Exorcism, scouted out by Fly. It just oh, it feels so bad for Fnatic to play. 
that's kind of a, a comeback play there. If they can get a kill on the Tiny, that's a five kill streak. Tiny's gonna live too. Yeah, a five kill streak Tiny into a tower would have been a good chunk of gold. I mean, honestly, can't he just TP out? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, their only stun is, is Night Stalker Q and Wyvern Ult. Like, to, to break TPs. Yeah, uh, that's a good point. It's like, all their movements are so difficult. This is why I think, like, catch is so important in this meta of Dota. Like, if you don't have it, you can't really do it. You have no comeback plays when you're behind. Yeah, exactly. Like, catch determines whether or not you can start a fight. And starting a fight is usually how you come back in a game. Like, if you get the jump on somebody, then Dota is always even how I was taught. That's a good point, yeah. It, th that's kind of the problem with uh, Fnatic's draft slow blitz, right? Like, they don't, they, they rely so much on winning lanes, they don't really pick that much catch, so if they lose the lanes, they have no comeback, right? Yeah. And how do they really come back in this game? They have no jump. I think Envy can go off. Like, yeah. Envy goes... It's so hard though, right? Like, he can't even solo kill any of their their, their supports. Like, the SD's just gonna disrupt him. And Tiny's gonna away. point now, which yeah. is a lot of burst potential onto that Weaver that he's gonna be afraid of. He managed to nicely juke it there. Like, this Weaver ain't... He isn't a... You know, I don't know. It, just, it feels like he has to do everything to win this game. He's yeah, not he a does. solo carry hero either. He's playing really well, though. Yeah. He is, for sure. Like, if they get the kill right now, and I think they should, like, this is a good start. This is their timing window that still exists. Like, if Fnatic get aggressive here, and they abuse the fact that this Invoker can't really fight, for this time period, and they take these like four on five engagements, then I can still see them win the game. Looks like it looks like OG still wants to fight. Power is uh, that's another problem with DP in this patch. Like uh, the tower armor, the HP got really buffed, so the towers are hard to take. And one ult, yeah. Yes, and uh, just o overall everything, like towers are hard to take. That means I feel DP generally. Like more of these. That's why you kind of also feel you see like this Medusa mid. Like how do you take Medusa's tower, right? How? Yeah. You, you actually can't. The tower's so tanky. He sits there spamming Mystic Saint. You can't jump him because of his ult and mana shield. That's that's why, honestly, this hero is so strong. You can't take his tower mid. That's generally a broken concept. Oh, oh man. That feels bad, man. That's the struggle for this Weaver to carry and turn around this game. This tiny is ahead with a blink. That the courier? Oh. That's a thing? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Jesus. <laughs> Four man the courier. I mean, that's like tower gold. Yeah, I mean, I guess you can net through BKB, so that makes sense. Yeah. You can also roar it, right? Yes, you can roar the courier. <laughs> Prophet's level 8 and 4. I mean, she rotated down and found nothing for like 2 minutes. So, 12, 10, 9 on the corpse. So cool. Right now, it's... Uh, so, I still want to think about how Fnatic can come back with like, the saying, like... It's just so timing. hard. Go with the Radiance top tower they is under need to maybe they need to take this top tower, tower and then they need a medallion maybe on like this, their course. And they need to just no, Roche with the un Radiant and Weaver needs to take Roche. Need like a beautiful fight. He's like forced to go Lincoln's though, so he's like their solo carry that isn't going damage. Radiant so yeah. he's, he's also quite poor. Like have to. Yeah, he's twenty five hundred. You don't think they need to take mid tower on Fnatic? I think they. I feel it's really can't. hard. Yeah. I feel like, like no, like OG is not dumb. They're not going to give their mid tower for free, right? But I think this top tower is free for. I don't feel OG will defend top tower, but OG will defend mid. And you need to, at this point when you're behind, you know, it's like you got to take what you can get. It's free, you know. You're like, you just got to take the free stuff. Right? Everything's bad, so take the best of the bad and make right. make the best out. They just lost their own mid tower, like pretty uncontested. Envy's trying to like cut some ways, be cute. He's got to be so careful with this tiny coming down here. He knows too. They're, they're checking all the tree spots here. No tell invisible. See Envy in a second. Fast, that was so fast. <laughs> Rough. And now, now since Weaver died bottom, they're going to defend top. They're not going to give this one. Now OG's... That's why I feel like Fnatic, they're not really taking top tower. Like, they should have already surrounded top tower with Night Stalker. And, uh, maybe Weaver could be doing Q plays bottom, but DP should have already been the kid top with the uh, Wyvern. Maybe Wyvern can stay. Regardless, this top tower should have. Now instead, what happens? They don't take the top tower. They lose OG the top, and now OG's gonna choke out the the Fnatic's jungle. Now the map is like restricted. It's like you have nowhere to go. It feels so bad. For All right, we'll get the TP out with that. No tell is nine and zero. 
Uh, perhaps killing him is going to be the way back into this game because there's, there's a lot of comeback gold to be had. Skill streak. There's definitely like, but the thing is, like we already talked about, like how how do they actually kill him? Like yeah. they don't have yeah. any catch. Shadow demon disruption too as a save. Yeah, and Naga sleep too for master counter initiation. I'm not trying to like be too grim for them. It's just like when you draft, I've had this exact problem on my teams before where you like don't draft any catch and you realize if you fall behind, like what's your method of comeback? It's okay to not draft catch. I feel if you have a better. Uh... Yes. Yeah, I'm not saying you always have to have a ton of catch. Yeah, it's just like, yeah, if you're behind, you can't come back. I know what you're saying. Yeah. It's good to have everything, obviously, both, but there's, like, some games where you just, you know, for example, I think Kingwin versus uh, EG Game 3, they had, like, no catch. They just had Medusa Ogre, and they just sat there and farmed, and she was better than you. Arguably, EG should have won that game, but you can But it does make, it does make like, what Split says, it does make playing Dota harder, though. I think Swindles said something along the lines of like, doesn't matter what your net worth is if you're stunned. And it's like, it, but if you're, you know, this far ahead and you have no disables, they just do more damage, they're tankier. I should try and get Medallion. Another cool thing about Naga support is it gives you Roshan. Get Riptide spell. Yeah. It's a really strong minus armor. Oh, Naga actually. I get a Medallion. You could always sleep as well yeah. to disengage. Yeah. Naga, especially on the side, like he's a free Roshan. Dyer doesn't want to go down in this pit area where the word is. They come and they're just going to sleep and set up with like Pando and tiny like. The, the, their draft just looks so beautiful, OG. They sleep, then the, the, they combo Nog, the tiny combo onto the Wyvern. As soon as sleep ends, Wyvern dies. They can't save. Panda just blinks and ults like whoever, the DP probably. And just burst with Shadow. Like, the team fight on OG, like everything just looks so good. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Yeah, like, Fnatic doesn't really have that hero to push waves. Like, Envy's trying his hardest to push these waves. You can see, like, this Naga is, like, solo deep pushing with this, like, illusion. One Riptide. Look at this. You see how annoying that is? That one, that one illusion? He's... And all it's gonna take is, like, a tiny, like, a sleep into a tiny TP, and Weaver could just die as well. Gonna be very careful, but... OG have other ideas. They're in, they're in the Roach pit. They're looking at themselves in ages. You know, they... They picked Invoker, we talked about all his downsides, why he's not here at the start. None of that, his downsides have been punished, and we're here 18 minutes in, he's gonna likely have the ages. Maybe they give it to Tiny since it's a kill streak, but either way, give it to Tiny. Invoker's a hero now, like he's managed to not get punished in that first 20 minutes where the hero is not um, really that relevant. But yeah. this is exactly like what Tiny wants is a hero that, that insurance policy, because even though Tiny's like top net worth, eventually Invoker's gonna overcome him. The only reason he's even top net worth on Tiny is because he has, you know, a godlike streak already. And, you know, Courier goes down, nothing on it. But he's going hood on Weaver. This is an MV classic. Uh, that is a few, He has a hood, bottle, and perseverance as a hero that lacks damage, like, innately. Doesn't want to get comboed, you know? Yeah, I mean, I, I see, like, I'm not even flaming it. It's like he's, yeah. he's backtracked almost on his build. He's like, I need some sort of tankiness. The, this Lincoln's not enough. And now, like, half of his net worth is regen items, honestly, if you this really is look a, at it. This is a BSJ item purchase here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even joking. Yeah. I mean, I'm like, sure if he... I would have gone Dragonlance. I'm not even fly. I'm not saying, like, I, that's actually what I would have gone. But. I feel like you have to just go Defusal. Play. Yeah, I would have gone Dragonlance like, Defusal. The way, here. You, you play defensively, you're not going to win this game. Yeah, yeah, you're not. I felt even this Perseverance was bad. I yeah. felt he needed to just get Defusal. I thought I, the bottle was bad. I watched, like, this LFI Monet play Weaver, and he always just goes Defusal, because... This hero, like, he doesn't want to go late. He doesn't, like, ultra late with his 25 talent, and he's, like, super imbo, but this hero has, like, this power spike, and then he falls off. Like, he's really strong, and then he falls off into Parabola, and then like, upside down Parabola, and then he gets really strong again. Yeah. And you need to, like, abuse Parabola. when he's really strong. It's a good word. No, I, I agree with what you're saying. It just goes, comes out. Is that could be enough to turn this fight around. It looks like gonna keep a higher level a little bit longer, but he's still gonna end up going down. No tail is destroying the resolution of the backlight. Should be dead yet. Well, that's, that's huge kill, actually. It's there we go. Nice fight. There's some life from Fnatic here. Yeah, it starts okay. They get a second kill on Shadow Demon. They're just charging in and fighting with his exes and no tail. He may just die twice. Our here. Okay, Weaver is actually huge for them. That low cool down Shikuchi. No tail is being ignored for now with the Aegis. Split wearing off, S4 comes back in, they'll take down Night Soul Grenade, it's time to swing back OG's way and take three kills. That's a bad best case scenario. That was, yeah. that was best case. That's good. If there's no Aegis there, they could actually focus down on the Tiny and finish off. They're gonna do that now, it's like, oh no. Envy does have the ultimate, yeah. <laughs> it's got the hood. 
they don't want to waste it, I guess. Looks like the Fnatic don't want to bring down. First. They don't want to bring down those. Right he's, he's keeping the blink disabled with the bugs. Oh, okay, well. Uh, oh, Jerex is just getting no his buddy out. out. Doesn't have a TP. Rip Jerex. Oh, can he actually hide? No way. He's gonna bug because he had Arcane and he's got this. Don't do it, Envy. Oh, there he is. <laughs> he's sending Illusion out first, that may have worked. Yeah. Cute little play. Oh. Best case scenario for Fnatic, you feel, in some way? Yes. I agree. I think uh, OG will be better ready. It's kind of like the... It's like a little thing. You know, it's like one fight. Now they need like three more of those fights in the way. They're playing fast now. Yeah, I like the Blink Side DP. Time. That's a sick build. I mean, I, I really like Blink DP overall, yeah. but with, especially this game because they like catch mobility. Wings player, the mid player, like he was probably the best DP. He'd always go Blink after you. It's good to make sure you force fights with your ult. He just the hero wants to be in the middle, you know, like he wants to be in the middle of the fight. You're getting all the siphons off. Radiant structures are fortified. I mean, the way Radiant's OG have to take it is like, uh, they literally just need to... Now they're gonna wait for the next Aegis, I guess, or just slow down the game a bit more, and... Uh, they have the Nagas to counter initiate, so like, what they should be doing is... Ideally, they're gonna take a fight in front of Fnatic's base, and if DP ults, I feel they should just Nagas sleep and disengage. And then as soon as the, the DP ults down, you trade, basically, Nagas sleep for DP ult, because DP ult is Fnatic's win condition. I don't think they have enough damage without it, but you negate it with literally a support. It's the entire core yeah. too. So you sleep, you disengage with Naga, and then you just go back in after the DP ult's down. And oh, that's no kind of how it is with the best here, just centuries. Oh, that was Q play. He tried. Tried to make the Invoker come out of Invis by forcing it to attack the... They still have Aegis for a bit. They want to wait for the BK. Bell finds DJ here, does not have Bell. <laughs> around the Rosie. Well, oh, Dogger goes down. Oh, yeah. They kill, but. Yeah. Space for sure. Oh, double. What's going on? X is at the bottom. No creep wave yet. <laughs> DJ is still juking. It's oh. fine. <laughs> Close. <laughs> Honestly, that was a lot of space though. That was, that was good. Oh, yeah, Made that take a lot longer than it should have. Two kills bottom, even if that just supports a no tier through tower. This is. Okay, here we go. Silence off. Unlikely get this split out in. Oh, oh my gets god. It. 12 health, 12 wow. HP. That is unfortunate for them. That's still not the worst thing in the world. Uh, yeah, I, I think they need, like, really good though, you know? Yeah, I think they need some breath of life here. How does it work if you toss Underlord and he's like mid air? He'll still be in base. He'll still be in base? Yeah. That'd be insane if you could toss him from. I, I just wasn't sure. Like, I'm saying if he's mid air while he yeah, teleports yeah. back. That hero doesn't need to be better, BSJ. Uh, I'm not, I'm not <laughs> saying that it needs buffs. to work that way. I'm just asking if it does. Yeah. I think OG should look at buying a gem soon, putting their jungle. But what they should do is like let the invoker play the left side of the map and the four of them just go bottom together. And they have Naga sleep to this. Now no DPO. Now like without the DPO, like Fnatic doesn't really have to play. Rizzo's there as well to help out, and No Tail gets the kill. Now this wave is pushing, so they should be able to take over this tower. We go for the sleep as a setup here. Turns doesn't commit to it. They're just gonna let Invoke bottom alone. Fly's pinging it. Available full solar crest now. Very expensive. I like this BKB purchase on Invoker. He doesn't like need fancy carry the game items. Like he will just carry. I just have ult. He's gonna be in trouble actually. Oh, what a toss! The, the no tail special. Just the crimson guard. Potential wind is curse. Soul catch on. No tail BKB is just to not get screwed over by that curse. Yeah. Not much so tanky with the soul catch. Got that underlord illusion now. Oh, that actually you know. Could be aura. Yeah, there you go. So, can Lackery they go high ground off this? They can do a lot of damage. They have a Lacrity Tiny. It's a really good duel. Well, they can do a lot of the outspam with the Underlord dead is gone too. And then yeah, another Lackery. toss backs. No tails better this than any other Tiny player, it feels like. And, well, immediately finish off DJ, but there's the toss. The first and down. On the back lines, the blink in from Arbit's death profit. 
Find Drax coming. Rezo forces him to TP out, but unfortunately they don't actually get the kill. Had the blink, but not had the ability to cancel TP. Oh. That's actually so rough. Like, Invoker gets tanky enough, he can just TP out anytime you go on him. Like. Doing the chappy. City. I bet this sets up a kill. Fly play going on. So no deep health on OG, they still have Naga Sleep. Either have two options now, they can like wait for the Roshan, Tekken Aegis, or they can just on high ground now again. They have a Lacrity BK. That power dies so fast to that hit. Going Daedalus, we saw that on no one earlier today. Daedalus tiny. Same damage output. We're just gonna at least for now look like the queue up the link for Lincoln. Still very little damage output. I don't know. I feel like uh like if the DP had a better start, like this game could have honestly turned. It's like you can kinda see Invoker's weakness as a hero. He hasn't really done much this game. Yeah. He's had a few, but the hero it's not resolution's fault. The hero just doesn't really do much. He needs like this high level and I don't I'm not sure if like the met the heroes in the meta right now are not good like Probably the Goku's not good versus the heroes in the meta, but you can see if the DP had a better start, if they helped out in lane, their lineup could have been really fast paced. They could have roached, taken all the towers, and just snowballed the game. And they don't have much, like, real. Besides Tiny, they can't really kill this Weaver. It's tank. But, you know, since the, you can see the effect of the lane, how it's having on. Still trying their hardest, though. Okay, we pop somewhere. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. I don't know what that was. Just OG weighing next Roche, I guess. He's weighing the Daedalus because of the black free, or how did no one go? Did he go Daedalus after AC? Or he went AC the Daedalus, yeah. yeah so I think he just wants to burst on targets like Wyvern in like two hits. I think he's going because of the lack free. Yeah, I could agree. Oh, Fnatic tried to smoke. This is the envy play. He loves sneaking these Roches. But they were 10 seconds too early to the Roche bit. Will they go check it again? Fortunately, illusions are all over them. We tell maybe Ray to initiate. I don't think he's got BKB because of that misclick earlier. So, yeah, it's still 20 seconds. They, so, they don't know about it, though. They don't yeah. know. Yeah. It's so hard to do this for Snaga. What it should be is like OG should push bottom and top, uh, bottom, mid and, mid and bottom. And the Naga just keeps scouting Roche, and they're basically in two places at once. And they have to force Fnatic back to the base, and as soon as Fnatic TP's back, which is happening now, OG can go Roche. Rezo is doing here, they spot out Envy and force out the time lapse back. He could be in some trouble here. Uh, OG's smart, they're gonna run now. They're gonna run back to their vision. They're gonna do Roche, and they have really good boards now. So now they know Wyvern and Underworld TP back, and they're, they're, Fnatic is split. Not only if they can test, they'll know exactly where they come from, too. Yeah. I think right now, Resolution immediate, should immediately just run bottom. He doesn't need to bots there. He can maybe bots there, because bots CD so, but he should be bottom right now. Pushing that wave. Okay. So yeah. not just, they, they've been pushing mid, but you think they need to push yeah. It's like cat mouse with Roche, but yeah. basically, like, force them to yep. deal with other parts of the map. Yeah, try and play the pick off game. The Sunstrike is going to be off the mark because of the toss back, but better yet, they could just kill a higher. Oh, they could use that. They split it yep. and just hitting like somebody behind. But Fnatic are actually just not grouped up. Like they're split pretty heavily. The thing is Fnatic knows they're threatening the Roche. Fnatic can't see anything either, so they have to throw in a hero like that. Yep. Yeah, they're trying He's to they're trying to steal it, I think. Envy was yeah, kind of in position on the left side, but they're gonna stop going for Roche to go for these kills instead. Killed. He wants to blink in. Oh. But blinks closer with a BKB, he does not get to the low ground though. Well, gonna buy back, and this time Fnatic, they're just charging forward, fly the target. Fnatic's night stop here, they're gonna switch targets Drax. to no tail. no tail's getting low. Drax should try and sleep here. And they need so, to do so. He should sleep, yeah. Disengage. Wait for the deep heal to go down, like no tail can even go shrine. And they kill two supports, Rezo in the back lines. Helping make that one happen. Oh, no tail go for the index to sleep myself, and... The hood! Oh. <laughs> oh. Does this, is this hood on cooldown? I need to know. 
Okay, he, he okay. Had one he that, gave it his all. He, he had 11 one charges. He did right. not give it his all. He gave it his 95%. Uh, yes, yeah, you got way too high for that. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, <laughs> dude, he was gonna die. It's cause, it's cause it was a, if he got time lapse off, you know. BSJ would have bought a hood there, man. I, I would have a dragon lance on top of it, so I would have had, you know, <laughs> a little bit of health left. Also, solar crest, fight. I think Envy's uh, the Slark hood, what are you a fan of yeah. <laughs> It seemed to go okay for a while, but then you realize the hero still sucks anyway. You won the game. I did, I did win that game. So. Second Aegis, cheese. Also, a cool thing is like, the remember the Wings Alacrity Panda? Oh man. Yeah, it's still, it's still, it's not as good, but it still does a lot of damage for Alacrity, the Earth Panda. Yeah, the Earth Panda still does like, a like 300 damage a hit, to, like uh, it, technically it's like, towers. It'll di it dies fast though. Yeah. It's not as fast as that wings the wings though, but that was a really cool game by the way. I just like to which one though? The, really enjoyed watching that one. You you were coaching DC in that yeah, game. Yeah, that right? was really fun to watch. Did yeah. you? That was great. It was good times. <laughs> I've I always appreciated how genuine you are. I saw was. a panda take my tower in like four and a half seconds. I was like, okay, that cool. We just got racks. But Blitz, why didn't you just? Kill it, man. <laughs> Run it back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I forgot, you guys were the first team that had to face it. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> that was the end of that DC. Resolution has, 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 has the first DC. To the end. He has a nightmare still on him. He's bringing it back. I remember that game. You guys had a huge lead and they just did that. Yes, really it was. Again, Sam. Yeah. Great memories. Yeah. Was that the elimination match too? Was no, the elimination right? match was when we had an AM versus a Storm, which I thought was an unlosable. Oh, I remember that game. I was told by Wings actually that that wasn't like back then. If you played AM against Storm, it was a free win. I, for the AM? Yeah. It's really hard for Storm to win that matchup. OG looking to put the nail in the coffin here as they try and break high ground here. Damage output coming out onto Ohio. He doesn't have buyback. Yeah, that's 77 seconds dead. Exposed racks. Weaver going for the split push bottom. The Winter's Curse not going to finish off Invoker. Can Envy equalize with the bottom oh, racks? Hood Lincolns. Yeah, Hood Lincolns. Hood Lincolns. He, Treads DPS. He's wishing he had a damage item there. Doesn't even get the tier 3 tower. Close. He's, He's going to turn back to fight, fight, yeah. But yeah, I think they have to. They have to they can just sleep limited supports and end that. Okay. Oh Don't laugh, guys. He's trying. I know. It's more just like that was ridiculous. Oh, that, that's the, that's the thing. You say he's trying. Like he's trying to create a win condition for his team, whereas a lot of players would just even yeah. behind 20k gold would just be playing safe and playing low risk Dota. You They're know. not gonna win by not fighting. Yeah. yeah. Like I'm not actually like that, that's not actually a bad play. I think he had to oh, try something. It was more just how quickly he got bursted. <laughs> it was kind of funny, yeah. yeah the fact yeah. that he went Lincoln's hood and he just died. Just... Fine. One pick the next. I like, love this Naga, like the way they played it. Dude, Rezo was not the win condition this game. Rezo. Rezo. The Rezo's, Rezo's, really, Rezo's really good at uh, farming with Invoker. Yeah. I see a lot of spells in this game. <laughs> no tell definitely carried this game. It feels like Invoker could have been any hero in some yeah, ways. I think uh, so too. I replace that Invoker with any other hero in this game. Well, no, the thing too. is, if you're tiny, if you like don't have this farming mid laner, then you feel pressured to farm yourself. Instead, no tell just does what he wants to do. Yeah, like any, any farming. Yeah, any farming area. Yeah. Could it be, could it be Medusa? Could it be whatever? Yeah. Uh, Albed's BKB. Albed's oh, really strong. They're focusing during the sleep, though. No one can actually help the Death Prophet, and they'll GG out. The world lives. That was a uh, dominant game. I think Fnatic just needs to, like, I know it's not necessarily their playstyle, but I think they, can, they at least had Rubik in the other games. So they kind of realized that they need to have some catch in their draft.